Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Under. This time we're going to start setting up the Telnet service. Now I know from a security standpoint this is not a good service to use. And, and I understand that. But there are some legacy devices that will still use that. Because they either don't have the licensing for the encryption necessary to do Secure Shell. Or they simply don't offer that service. And you'll typically see this especially with the Cisco devices that work with some of the older devices that simply didn't have the processing power for it or just don't have that version of the binary install that can do SSH. So to get the process started, we'll do sudo space apt-get space install telnet d. And it'll go out here and normally would have to download it, but I've already been working with installing this and uninstalling it several times. So what it needs is is already there so it's going the process of unpacking the file that it downloaded it'll take just a second here to get everything installed and then once it has gotten it installed then we'll actually have to go through starting the telnet service and it's not just a matter of starting the telnet service it's actually running under something called inet d and we actually have to start that up now you'll see reference here to this utmp it that is kind of a and for, I may not be totally accurate with this, but a uh, kind of a mini firewall. I'm going to take a little bit different approach to it because I'm still getting used to all the things that Raspi can do. So I'm going to use a uh, a different process to get it done. But you know, we'll maybe, maybe we'll look at the UTMP at some point. So we've got uh, Telnet installed. So we'll do sudo space etc init d backslash open bsd dash inet d space restart now we could do just a start but if inet d is already running for something else then you won't get telnet started you also have the option if it's just you working on this particular box nothing is there you can also do a reboot as well so just to make sure that this is up and running we'll fire up another tab here and i'll tell it back into the box and you know as you can see just like you were used to you know, you get in and you're fine. One time I was trying to uninstall Telnet to uh, to try something else, and I'd left this session up and running, and it wouldn't un uninstall Telnet. It took me a while to figure out why. And then once I installed it, I want to uninstall it rather, then it worked just fine. So I had had not run across that before. So to control access to it, there are a couple of different files you can use, but I found you can pretty much do it all with one file. So we'll do a sudo space uh, nano space backslash etc backslash hosts allow. And you can see this is something I was working on before. So what we'll do here is we'll just bring this back to where I had first started with it. And your syntax is going to be the service name and how I came up with the name of the service because I tried Telnet, Telnet D, and only when I did using the all commands you see up top did it work. And that's because they didn't have the right service name. So I found a reference that if I went and looked at the syslog file, it would tell me the, tell me the name of the service that was running, and it did. So what we'll do at this point just to show you that the file does work is we'll to deny the address that I'm going to be coming from into the RPI. And anytime you make a change like this, you've got to restart the service. Otherwise, it doesn't know that there's been a change. So we'll try to connect up again. And it acts like it's going to connect, but you never get the prompt. And here in just a second, okay, you saw we got disconnected because it's not letting you in. Now, one another way to approach this is we sit there and say, okay, I want that address to always get in. So we'll do change that to allow, and then like you saw when we first got into the file, we will add this, but with a little bit of a variation. If you do just the first part of the IP address, but not the, the last part, or you can make this as global as you want to, but in this case, we're saying that, okay, if your address matches that 161, then you can get in, but if you're anything other than 161, you can't get in. And we'll just go ahead and save this and restart it. Now if we go through our quick connection in Zoc. 
gets right in, no problem. So, you know, you see here that you can install Telnet. And for use in a, in a home lab, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with that one in a production situation. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to use it because your password and username are, are passing out there in clear text. It can be sniffed. With SSH, it makes it considerably uh, more difficult. So we'll go ahead and we'll clear out this session. And just to show you a little bit of how I did some of this, we'll do a tailspace backslash var, backslash log, backslash syslog. And you're seeing the last few uh, entries that was going on. So here is the one where we tried to get in and it said refuse. So it was doing what it should have. And then we went and changed it and then restarted the process. Then we got right in. So very straightforward. And it's just one of the services I'm going to be exploring because I'm looking at this as a whole toolkit process for those that have to work on networks, giving them a test point that can be configured to try virtually anything. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for your time in watching this as well as some of the additional information you will see on my website at www.ronnutter.com. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again.